Hello, welcome to Accounting with Mr H. In this video, we're going to look at how to prepare an income statement using absorption costing. Thank you so much if you've already subscribed to the channel. If you haven't, please do subscribe, like, share and comment on the videos. Let me know what you find useful and what you'd like to see in future videos. Here is the question for this video. The following budgeted information is available for Agatha Limited. And in the table, I can see I've been given some budgeted information, the budgeted sales in pounds, the budgeted sales in units, and the budgeted production in units for March and April. Other information, the inventory on March the 1st is expected to be 100 units, direct materials per unit, four pounds, direct labour per unit, five pounds. The budgeted fixed production overheads are 18,000 pounds per month. And the budgeted fixed production overheads are absorbed based on a budgeted output of 4,000 units per month. And the first thing I'm being um, asked to do then, calculate the total budgeted production cost per unit using absorption costing. So essentially, I'm to work out the total cost of making one unit or the total budgeted cost of making one unit. So I'm going to put a pound sign on my answer sheet. There we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is look for any direct costs, uh, costs that can closely be attributed to the manufacturer of the product. So these would normally be direct materials, direct labour. Um, sometimes you see things like manufacturing royalties. So those sorts of items are going to be your direct costs. And so in the information where I was given direct materials, so let me put those down, there we go. So to make one unit, uh, we're told it needs four pounds worth of direct materials. So they're the materials that would actually be used specifically in the manufacture of the product. We were also told the direct labor per unit is five pounds. So I'm gonna add that on. There's no mention of any anything else, like as I say, manufacturing royalties. So I add those two together and that gives me the direct cost per unit of nine pounds. Now we need to deal with the indirect costs or the overheads. And this is where the absorption bit begins to come in. So we were told then the budgeted fixed production overheads are 18,000 pounds per month, and they are to be absorbed based on a budgeted output of 4,000 units per month. So I need to work out how much of these overheads to give to each unit. Um, and to do that, I'm being told to use absorb it based on the, the budgeted output. So the production overhead, let me get a quick working, there we go. So 18,000 pounds divided by 4,000 units means in order for us to make sure that we have covered um, or absorbed this 18,000 pounds of overheads each month, we need each unit um, to take, if you like, a, sh a share of it. And that share is four pounds 50 because they are budgeting an output, a production output of 4,000 units per month. So if they make 4,000 units in a month, if each unit has absorbed, taken on £4.50 towards the overheads, then that means that we are covering the overheads of £18,000. So I'm going to put that into my uh, calculation. There we go. So the production overhead uh, per unit is £4.50 and then add that on to the direct cost. And there's the answer to part A. So the total production cost or the total budgeted production cost per unit, 13 pounds and 50 pence. Well, let's go on to part B then. So for part B, uh, we were asked to prepare a budgeted income statement for the month of April uh, using absorption costing. So you'll see I've laid mine out then, got my title, Agatha Limited, budgeted income statement for the month of April. And just like any income statement, I'm going to start with my revenue and we're doing this for April. And I can see in the table over on the left that the budgeted sales in pounds for April, £98,750. So that can go straight in. There we go. Then I need to work out the cost of sales. Um, so I need to start with the inventory at the beginning of April. And if I look over on the left again, the, bullet, the first bullet point told me the inventory at March the 1st is expected to be 100 units. So that's got to be my starting point. Obviously, we're doing the income statement for April, but I'm going to have to go back to the beginning of March 
to try and work out how many units of stock they will have at the start of April. So let's get a working box. There we go. <clears throat> so working number one. What I'm going to do then, I'll, sh I'll put it up and then talk you through it. So working one, I'm thinking about March and I'm thinking about how the stock has been made and used during March. So you'll see there in my calculation at the start of March, they've got this 100 units that they're expected to have. If you look in the table, it says they're planning on making 4000 units in March. So I'm adding that on. So they've got the 100 that they've already got at the start, plus another 4000 that they will make in March means they will have 4,100 units. But in March, their budgeted sales in units is 3,900. So I'm taking that away, and that means they will be left with 200 units at the end of March. So if they finish March with 200 units, that means they will start April with 200 units. So that's that's the, 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 uh, the figure I wanted. But in an income statement, we obviously need to have things in pounds. Uh, we don't want it in units. So I'm going to need to multiply that 200 units by the cost per unit, which we just worked out in part A, and we worked it out to be £13.50. So 200 units at £13.50 per unit means their opening inventory has a value of £2,700. I can put that in my income statement, and there we go. The next thing I'm going to think is, what was the cost of the production? Um, so there we go, I've got a narrative then production. Um, when you're dealing with a, an income statement for um, uh, most businesses, we often put purchases there. Uh, but this business, uh, they're, they're manufacturing these things themselves. So I'm just putting production or cost of production, I could put as a narrative. And working to then, so what do I know about the production in April? Well, in the table of information, we're told that the budgeted production for April is 3,800 units. And we know, again, from part A, that the budgeted cost per unit is £13.50. So 3,800 units times £13.50 gives us then a total production cost of £51,300. And then to finish the cost of sales section, I need to know the inventory or the value of the inventory at the end of April. So just like we did in working number one, I'm going to have to do a similar thing in working number three. So we know then from working one that they started April or they, they, they're, they're budgeted to start April with 200 units. And if I look at the information above, so we know that they are planning on making 3,800 units in April. So I'm adding that onto the 200 they'll have at the start. So that gives them 4,000 units. And it tells us that they expect to sell 3,950 units in April. So that means they'll be left with 50 units at the end of April. And again, we know that the cost per, uh, budgeted cost per unit is £13.50. So 50 units multiplied by £13.50 gives me a closing inventory value of 675. So I'm going to take that away. There we go. And that gives me a cost of sales then of £53,325. I can take that away from the revenue and we're at £45,425. The final thing I need to do, and you may have heard the, the phrases over-absorb or under-absorb, and that's what I need to consider here. And it all goes back to this £18,000 of fixed production overheads per month. And this business has absorbed these, if you remember, based on a budgeted output of 4,000 units per month. And we worked out when we did part A that 18,000 divided by 4,000 units um, equals £4.50 per unit. And so each unit is taking on £4.50 or absorbing £4.50 of these fixed overheads. But that is assuming that we make 4,000 units each month. If the business doesn't make dead on 4,000 units, it will lead to a situation where they either haven't absorbed enough towards the £18,000, which we call underabsorption, or they've absorbed more than they needed to. If their production is above 4,000 units in a month, they will have absorbed too much towards the 18,000, which we call overabsorption. So let's have a work, let's work this one out then. So uh, my next working. So if I look at April then, so the budgeted production we were told in the last bullet point is 4,000 units per month. 
but the budgeted production specifically for April is 3,800 units. So that means in April, their, their production level is 200 units under budget. They're anticipating that they will make 200 units less than the, the budgeted output of 4,000 units. So that means they won't quite have enough um, to cover this £18,000 of fixed overheads during the month of April. Because remember, each overhead is absorbing £4.50 towards the uh, fixed overhead. So each unit, sorry, is absorbing £4.50. Let's put that working up uh, from part A. There we go, I'll put it in a yellow box. So if you remember, that's what we worked out in part A. So each unit is absorbing £4.50, and then that means we will cover the £18,000 of fixed overheads. But they are not making 4,000 units in April, they're only making 3,800. So they won't have enough uh, to cover that 18,000. How much will they be short? Well, the formula is going to be 200 units, because that's how many under budget they are in April, multiplied by £4.50. I don't multiply it by £13.50 because that's, that includes the direct costs. All I'm concerned about here is how the, the overhead, the absorption of the overheads. And because they're not planning on making this additional 200 units in April, um, they now won't absorb 200 units worth of overheads, which is £4.50 per unit. So they are short, if you like, of £900. So that's going to eat into their profit. So this business has got a situation of underabsorption. So I'm going to go back to my income statement and record this. There we go. So underabsorption. And because they're short of £900, they haven't now built that £900 into their, um, into their costings. That's just going to reduce their profit a little bit. So my final answer ends at £44,525. In a different question, if they had made more than 4,000 units in April, well, then the additional units, whatever they'd made over budget, I would multiply that number by £4.50 and then they, that business would then have overabsorption. They would have absorbed too many £4.50s if you want to think of it like that. So now they would have had a bit more profit. Um, so I would have added it on. Overabsorption, I would add on. And there we go. I hope that's been helpful then, giving you a bit of an insight into how to prepare an income statement using absorption costing. Please do remember to subscribe, like, share and comment on the videos. Let me know what you find uh, useful and what you'd like to see in future videos.